Hey everybody, my name is Folk U Developer, and thanks so much for joining me for Living the Creative Act, where we read and react to a chapter from the book by Rick Rubin. Today's chapter is called Experimentation and is from pages 149 to 154 in the book. Uh, let's dive right in. We have collected a handful of seeds He's referring to the previous chapter here of starting points and potentialities. Uh, watch the VOD of last week to catch up, I suppose. We now enter the second stage, he writes, the experimentation phase. Fueled by the initial hit of excitement at discovering a starting point, we play with different combinations and possibilities to see if any of them reveal how the seed wants to develop. Think of this as a search for life. We're looking to see if we can get the seeds to take root and sprout a stem. There's no right way to experiment. Generally speaking, we want to begin interacting with the seeds, developing our starting point in different directions. We are cultivating each seed, much as a gardener creates optimal conditions to foster growth. This is one of the fun parts of a project because nothing is at stake. We get to play with forms and see what takes shape. There are no rules. Cultivation will look different for every artist and every seed. If the seed is a character in a novel, perhaps we widen the world they live in, develop a backstory, or become the character and start writing from their point of view. If the seed is a story for a film, we might want to explore various settings. It could be different countries, communities, time periods, or realities. Shakespeare's plays, for example, have been adapted into movies centered around everything from New York street gangs to samurais, from Santa Monica to outer space. There are countless directions to explore and we never know which will guide us to a dead end and which will lead us to new realms until we test it. In the case of a song, a vocalist might respond very quickly to a musical track and the melody will immediately reveal itself. Other times, although the singer finds the musical track compelling, they will listen to it a thousand times and nothing will come from it. In this phase, we are not looking at which iteration progresses the quickest or the furthest, but which holds the most promise. We focus on the flourishing and wait to prune. We generate possibilities instead of eliminating them. Editing prematurely can close off routes that might lead to beautiful vistas previously unseen. In the experimentation phase, Conclusions are stumbled upon. They surprise or challenge us more often than they fulfill our expectations. Ancient Chinese alchemists searching for immortality mixed saltpeter, sulfur, and charcoal. They discovered something else, gunpowder. Countless other inventions, penicillin, plastic, pacemakers, faucet notes, were discovered by accident. Consider how many innovations that might have changed the world have been lost because someone was so focused on their goal they missed the revelation in front of them. The heart of the experiment is mystery. We cannot predict where a seed will lead or if it will take root. Remain open to the new and unknown. Begin with a question mark and embark on a journey of discovery. Take full advantage of the energy inherent in the seed itself and do whatever is possible not to disturb it. You may be tempted to intervene and steer its development toward a specific goal or preconceived idea. This may not lead to the most productive this may not lead to the most productive of its possibilities at this stage of the process. 
allow the seed to follow its own path toward the sun. The time to discriminate will come later. For now, allow space for magic to enter. Not every seed must grow, but it may be there is a right time for each one. If a seed does not seem to be developing or responding, consider storing it rather than discarding it. In nature, some seeds lie dormant in anticipation of the season most conducive to their growth. This is true of art as well. There are ideas whose time has not yet come, or perhaps their time has come, but you are not yet ready to engage with them. Other times, developing a different seed may shed light on the dormant one. Some seeds are ready to germinate instantaneously, and you may start experimenting and find yourself completing the work and being pleased with the result. Or you may get halfway through the project and feel unsure where it wants to go. As we lose enthusiasm, we often continue to labor on a seed, believing that the work has to turn out for the better because we've invested so much time in it. If the energy continues to drop, it does not necessarily mean that the seed is bad. We just may not have the right, we just may not have found the right experiment for it. Perhaps we need to step away for a time and shift perspective. We may choose to start over with or set it aside for a while and sift through the others. The outcome is not up to us. Give some attention to each seed, regardless of what you believe its, its potential may be, and look for a beautiful response. If you have just one seed, a very specific vision you want to carry out, that's fine. There is no right way. You might consider the possibility, however, that it could end up being a limitation because you are no longer taking advantage of all that you have in you. Being open to possibility gets you to a place you want to go that you may not know you wanted to get to. If you know what you want to do and you do it, that's the work of a craftsman. If you begin with a question and use it to guide an adventure of discovery, that's the work of the artist. The surprises along the way can expand your work and even the art form itself. When a plan is flourishing, we can see the life spring forth from every stalk, leaf, and flower. How do we know when an idea is flourishing? Often the most accurate signposts are emotional not intellectual. Excitement tends to be the best barometer for selecting which seeds to focus on. When something interesting starts to come together, it arouses delight. It's an energizing feeling of wanting more, a feeling of leaning forward. Follow that energy. During the experimentation phase, we are paying attention to this natural reaction of enthrallment in the body. There is a time for the headwork of analysis, but not yet. Here, we follow the heart. At some point, we may be able to look back and understand why the feeling arose. Other times, we will not. And that's fine, too. For now, this is of no concern. If two ideas feel somewhat equal in weight, and one has clear potential to turn into something beautiful, and the other shows less potential but seems more interesting, feel free to follow your interest. Base decisions on the internal feeling of being moved and notice what holds your interest. This will always be in the greatest service of the work. Man, I really, really love this book. This was such a fun section. 
he's building off what he talked about last week with the seeds of, you know, gathering a whole bunch of them and then choosing a few to come to spend time with. And then in this experimentation chapter, he's talking about different ways to, to approach that, which I guess he's calling the experimentation phase. Now, as, uh, as web developers, as iOS developers, setting up a new project uh, can take some time. I know that there's some, there are some project templates out there, um, but it does feel like experimentation can start to really, <laughs> really kill a seed of an app idea. Um, because it's kind of so long between having the idea to seeing it kind of come out in your own code, the interesting part of the idea anyway, uh, getting bogged down by project setup, by finding the right dependencies to use, the right libraries. Um, I know some folks like to have like a template project that they use to... So they can get up and running really fast. But like what happens when your idea doesn't fit your template project? I really don't have a good answer for this. Especially because every time I start a new project, I've already learned stuff from the previous projects I've made, right? So what I did for navigation in the previous project, I want to make it better <laughs> in this one. And that just is also kind of taking energy away from from the, from experimenting with this seed. Yeah, I guess as I say that out loud, I guess I guess kind of have to focus like what are we experimenting on? Are we experimenting with the idea or are we experimenting with different kinds of project setup? And because, and because I have so many ideas, I don't really get a chance to, to experiment with some of these things as much as I would like. Um, you know me, always experimenting. But assuming we start to get to the idea, well, I guess this is one reason why folks say to start with kind of whiteboarding your app idea instead of jumping straight into code because a whiteboard you can just your your pen goes that's where the ink comes out unlike with programming uh sometimes the compiler gets in the way or types get in the way or, or stuff and yeah i guess that's one reason why folks really like um languages like javascript and ruby where there's less rules, so to speak, you can, it's a little bit quicker to go from thought to thought to seeing something on the screen. I like how he describes experimentation as a search for life though. Uh, right here at the third from the end line, because not every seed is, is going to sprout into something. And some certainly will. Um, yeah, I think TikTok is also just a great platform for experimenting because with the TikTok tools, you can kind of put an idea out there easily for you to see how you feel about it, for you to see well how others feel about it. Um, although I do like how he focuses on the joy in uh, in your own body for just deciding if a seed sprouts or not, and not so much if other people like it or not. And that might seem subtle, um, but I think it's kind of a big deal. Uh, as he says in previous chapters, the only thing that matters is that you like what you're making. Because if you like it, You've already won, <laughs> is how he says it. Yeah, so he says cultivation will look different for every artist and every seed. He gives an example of if we're writing a novel, maybe we'll 
implied in the backstory. If we're making a film, maybe we'll think about what setting it's going to be in. Um, what about for an app, though? Um, yeah, I guess kind of uh, figuring out kind of the main interaction for the idea. Because I feel like a lot of uh, app ideas are about having a smooth interaction, having just the right animation, just the right amount of response when you tap or swipe or slide something. And everything else kind of uh, can get filled in later. I know for me, I look for the most riskiest thing from an idea and try to build that. Because if, if we can't build the riskiest thing, then everything else was kind of a, a waste, so to speak. I know it's not really a waste because it might come in handy in a different project. But it doesn't serve uh, this project, I suppose. He says, we're not looking for which direction progresses the fastest or the furthest, but which holds the most promises. I do understand what he means by editing prematurely can close off routes. I'm not sure what he means by which holds the most promise. Well, I guess later in the chapter, he talks about delight as a signifier of promise. And yeah, editing prematurely, I feel like that's, I think that's why folks give that advice of if you have a good idea, don't share it. <laughs> uh, because someone that you, someone might offer kind of a judgmental response and that will, that might squash any positive internal response that you're having. And that could crush, that could crush an idea and that that could be, would be tragic because it, it'd be in a premature edit. I love the second half of this last sentence too. Might lead to beautiful vistas previously unseen. Yeah, I, <laughs> I, I love wandering. I love just walking around the city. I love just playing with a piece of code over and over, seeing what happens. Um, yeah, I really, I really don't like <laughs> closing something down too early. Yeah, conclusions can be stumbled upon, uh, by wandering. And he talks about some of the accidents that have happened during wandering, like gunpowder, penicillin, um, this kind of evidence He's kind of offering supporting evidence. Hey, look, wandering does find some cool things sometimes. Um, yes. Yes, it does. Especially in New York, if you go down another street you haven't gone down, there's, there's always something, there's always something new and different. That's one of the things I love about the city. So, he, so on this next slide, he's writing, the heart of the experiment is mystery. We cannot predict where a seed will lead or, or if it will take root, remain open. Yeah, I certainly try to stay in the present when I'm doing this. Staying in the present and not trying to look too far ahead into the future. Um, I kind of try to turn that part of my brain off and let other parts that just kind of take one step at a time uh, take the lead. You may be tempted, he says, to intervene and steer development toward a specific goal or preconceived idea. Yeah, I guess for me, it's like, uh, I want to make an app for everything. And if I stayed with that mentality, I guess I would have never perhaps started streaming, started 
streaming reading a book started sharing these uh these videos around the city that i take uh i would still say that those are in an experimentation phase <laughs> they're still growing for sure uh but it does seem promising i do feel delight taking these videos i do feel delight sharing them Yeah, I do feel like he's getting a little repetitive in what he's saying here, but I guess he's really trying to drive home the point of allow space for magic to enter, let things happen as they will. And if nothing happens, like store it. And I guess this is where the seed analogy uh, really helps. I know we were trying to dig into like, what does he mean by a seed uh, in last week's episode? Um, I guess seeds, you can really store a whole bunch of them in your, I guess they're called a silo or, or seed storage, depending on what, <laughs> what game you're playing. Uh, yeah, I've, I talked about this mic, um, last week, how I, uh, I bought this back in high school. And, and now it's actually getting a use because I, I stored it up. Yeah, not every seed is ready right away. Uh, like, for example, this mic wasn't ready right away. I, <laughs> I even took singing lessons back in the day, but I, uh, I, I don't have a good voice <laughs> for singing uh, at any rate. Other times, so this last sentence, this happens all the time for me. Other times developing a different seed may shed light on a dormant one. Yeah, when I'm stuck on a programming problem, if I step away and work on something else, if I step away, work on a different part of the app, if I step away, go for a walk, step away, work on a completely different app, some of those ideas come back and, and re-inspire perhaps my main project. Yeah, so he says some kind of sprout right away. Um, yeah, and and this is something that I'm kind of uh, figuring out. He's talking about if you lose enthusiasm for a project, that's fine. Maybe it's time for a different one. Because um, I have, I just have so many ideas of things that I want to do. And I guess kind of following his advice. I could treat them as experiments. I could treat them as seeds. Um, the limit seems to be my own craftsmanship. Uh, <laughs> the limit seems to be my own time in being able to implement this stuff. And of course, continue to stay open, he says, open the possibility to get to a place that you may not know you wanted to get to. Yeah, here he differentiates between the craftsman and artist. And I think they're definitely intertwined, like, and kind of discovering the idea, playing with the seed, experimenting, and then at some point it's time to like make it, right? So a big part of being a programmer is, of course, the, the craftsmanship, for lack of a better word, of modeling stuff, uh, writing out code. Uh, but even that has, I think, experimentation to it, too. Like, I, see, I definitely see code writing as an artistic form. That's not necessarily right or wrong. There's so many ways to do things, so many ways to express. So it's like a, like a two-layer... So it's like a, I see programs, programming as like a two layer artistic thing. There's like the, the main idea of the app and then the craftsmanship of building it. Also, there's a lot of uh, freedom and artistic space to explore for how, how do we want the app to behave? How do we want to implement it? Do we want to use this framework or that framework? Uh, are we going to use 
enums or protocols or classes and, and how we're going to organize our data models. Plenty of room for experimentation in all of that. How do we know an idea is flourishing? And he says it's emotional. Yeah, I guess for me, like this last line, follow that, ener follow that energy. That's something I've been saying for a while. Of, of work on the project that feels fun to you, uh, especially when you're not at work. <laughs> if a project's not fun and it's a grind, work on something else. But I do feel like there's come, does come a time to like, once the idea is kind of specified to kind of grind through. And since I have so many ideas that are delightful, yeah, I guess I guess I get distracted by, is distraction even the right word? I get distracted by new inspirations while I'm working on the grind of other projects. So I, I have published a lot of stuff, but a lot of stuff also, I would have done even more if I wasn't so inspired by new ideas. At some, so this part is really nice. At some point, we may be able to look back and understand why the feeling of excitement arose. Yeah, especially with the Subway app, looking back, it makes a lot of sense why I got excited about making a Subway app. Like, I hate waiting for the train. I get anxious waiting for the train. But I do love transit. <laughs> I do love mass transit. I love that part of the city. And I had the ability to to make an app. The interest, need, and ability were, were all there. So it made sense that that just kind of collided together. And this app, this app jumped out. And then the last slide here. He's kind of repeating himself about follow follow the emotional energy when you're experimenting with your ideas. If both seem pretty good, do the one that seems more interesting, even if it shows less potential. And he says, following your interests will always be in the greatest service of the work, uh, which is a beautiful thought to end on. Uh, so good luck to everyone experimenting with their ideas this week. May you follow your, your own energy.